All right, we've got our crew of ghost mantises all ready to be rehoused into their communal setup. We've got a nice big enclosure here that's just waiting to be used. I'm a bit worried that the holes in the ventilation is possibly a bit big because some of these guys are pretty teeny, so they might squeeze their little so they might squeeze their little asses through the ventilation holes, which I don't want. I don't think they'll survive very well out here in the UK. This enclosure is one that I custom built. It was a bit of an experiment because the sides are made out of acrylic. The only thing that's not is the door, which is glass. And I just got a picture from a charity shop for like one pound and then just took the frame out of it. It's quite a good cheap way of getting glass. Uh, but I had to make some modifications because it wasn't quite big enough. The only thing is with these acrylic ones, and I thought it might not be such an issue with thicker acrylic, is it does warp. I thought it might be okay if it was a uh, thicker acrylic, which is this is like three, four mil, maybe four mil. But it's still warping a little bit, so it's not quite flush with the door. You can kind of see, maybe, can you see that? Doesn't quite fit flush with the door, which bugs me, but that's all right, it's worth trying. I think from now on I'll just have to go all glass, even though it's a bit more expensive. Got this really cool bit of wood. I actually found this on the ground just on a walk. Uh, there's loads of it. I mean, it saves you, I guess it depends in the area that you live, but driftwood around here is, is pretty expensive. You know, you pay like five or six pounds for something like this. And I think this looks even better than some driftwood. So it's worth just going out and seeing what you can find. The only thing is, obviously, you will need to sterilise it, whether that's baking it, boiling it, freezing it, whatever. This was baked and boiled. But I'm wondering if it's easier just to freeze freeze them, because you don't have to... It's just a bit easier, isn't it? Just put it in the freezer for a day. I'm not sure. So it better be on the safe side with that. I also have a tub of various leaf litter and... Things I can put in there for them to grip onto. I've already got an idea in my mind of how they'll want this to look. I was also thinking, actually, you know what? If we're going to put this in here, we could put some isopods in. Because at the moment, I've just got them housed in plastic containers. Which uh, is okay, but that'd be good to have them out. To be honest, I don't really know. The thing that puts me off is I just think, well, the mantids are just going to eat them. But I don't know. Maybe, I guess, I guess for the most part, the isopods just stay out of the way and underground so they don't really get seen. And there's plenty of them, so if a few get picked off, no harm done. Plus, it's going to be pretty important to keep those guys well fed if they're a communal, just to stop them eating each other. So I'm wondering, actually, we're probably better to get the isopods in there first. And it will free up this little enclosure for my dairy cow isopods, because they kind of need something a bit bigger. There's actually quite a lot of substrate in here, I think. And, of course, plenty of fungus gnats. Bane of my life. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take some substrate out of this, I think, to make room. Well, I don't want to lose any of the little guys, so... Probably tons in here. Um, what's the best way to do this? They're all kind of nestled in the moss. Yeah, that's a lot of isopodes. Well, let's just get you in there to start with. So many springtails too. Oh, maybe I should just dump it in. That's cool, they've really taken off actually. 
just a bit too much moss but that's okay now where do we want this do we want it upright or do we want it more down like this I think we'll go well upright that look good all right there you go you've now got something to hide under my dudes maybe we go back to twisted hazel because I think it's important that these guys have a lot of hanging spots so they can stay out of each other's way and this stuff is really good for that yeah I think what we'll do is poke a load of this into the background in various spots which should give our dudes plenty of places to hang out interesting that the wood lice have sorry I call them wood lice I'm so used to that it's interesting that the isopods have uh, took refuge up on here I like the idea of all of these emanating out of one point like a little root system okay I think that looks pretty good I'm happy with that I don't want it to be too overcrowded there's lots of room at the top here for them to hang from maybe fill out this area a little there we go cool I think the next thing we need is some leaf litter might go quite heavy on that at the bottom, just to hide all the little isopodes. Definitely should have done this part first. Just one dirty... It's looking a bit green, so I'm just going to kind of sprinkle some substrate over the top. I don't want it to be too green, because it will take away from the dark texture of the ghosties next thing is getting the guys inside I'm hoping the isopods will behave and stay in there I think if they've got a nice environment they're not going to try and leave it to come outside in the in the cold just give it a bit of a spritz around the bottom definitely got some concerns about the guys kind of lurking around up here and stuff I feel like they're just going to get taken out right then let's move the little guys in what we'll do is as I take them out I'm going to try and sex them as well see if we can get a read on roughly how many males females we've got I'll be very sad if we've got like all seven males or something but you never know this one I think is a female so if you don't know already the way to tell the difference is firstly the segments on the abdomen also the crown i can't remember what the name of it is now but the little crown on top of their head the males will have a kind of crease in the middle it will taper in and then come out again the females have got more of a um, kind of rectangle shaped crown all right First guy in, or girl in, to the new residence. I hope they're okay with those isopods. God, the isopods will probably eat them. They could. I oh, don't immediately get out. Right, I'm trusting you to stay there. Probably should have put them near the bottom, shouldn't I? This one I think is a male because he's got a slightly flatter abdomen and he looks like he's got the little crease in the middle of his crown. I think this is another female. Another female I think, but just from looking at this one, I think it's had a bit of a bad molt because its leg, as you can see, is really straight. So that's a real shame, but she should still be okay. 
that's three females, one male, so that's all good so far, to be honest, as long as I've got one male, that's fine. Hey you. I think I got a little sidetracked here whilst I was trying to put them in and managing the ones trying to escape, but the final count was four females and three males. This little guy's got a bit of a dodgy arm as well. His uh, raptorial arm doesn't seem to be operating as it should do. So I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, there's two in here that have got some slight deformities. They should be okay though because they are L2. So I'm hoping they'll just grow out of that in the next molt. I've noticed just now those two guys at the back there, there was some aggression. I was hoping they would be a bit more amicable to each other. As you can see, they're having a bit of a face off now. It might just be that they're going to establish their own territory and just a case of saying, right, you stay out of my way. This is my area. And once they get a bit more settled, they, uh, that won't be an issue because it's probably okay now, but when they get a bit bigger. Oh, here comes somebody to try and break it up. How's this going to go down? They all just seem to want to hang out up there. I was hoping they would kind of use the, obviously they've got so much space. I was hoping they would be using all of this space rather than all crowding up in one corner. But it may be that they, uh, that I need to kind of install some netting on the top lid if they're dead set on just hanging around up there rather than on the branches. This guy he doesn't know what to do with that isopod. another little face off going on up here it's a bit concerning when I mean, they are known for being communal and they've got plenty of space so I'm not really sure why they're choosing to just congregate in this one area really strange behavior I mean, if this continues, then I will just have to separate them. I'm just hoping they're kind of just working things out at the moment. But we'll update... Oh, this guy's having a little drink. We'll update in an hour, and I'll let you know what modifications I've made, and... and take it from there. Been watching them for an hour now i was genuinely really worried when i was first uh put them in because they did not seem to want to get on i've blocked off that back of the enclosure because one of them kept trying to get behind it which i don't want because he will get stuck one uh, he will get stuck one day um i wondered why they were all so keen to get in the same place but i didn't really think of it and they're kind of doing it now. It's because they're trying to get towards the light and the light was in that corner. So they're obviously trying to get closer to the light. And interestingly, thinking about it, it makes sense because what else is attracted to the lights but other insects for them to catch and eat. So it does make sense that they were kind of all vying for that one place and uh, defending it vehemently. But they seem more chilled now. I think once um once I've got that kind of this um, them away from that spotlight they'll probably go do their own thing. But yeah, we'll see how they go. We'll try and keep count of them, make sure there's no casualties and they uh the isopods seem okay. I'm a, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is if they go into a molt, would uh would one of the bigger isopods start chewing on them? Hope not. If anyone's got any idea on that let me know but I, I think they'll be okay and they don't seem interested in eating the little ones either because uh, I was watching and a few times little ones ran past 
and the mantis just just kind of ignored them so i think we're all good on that front uh and i've decided to rather than name them individually i think we'll just call them the milton massive of course named after the main ghost mantid the big boy milton himself